Hey guys and welcome to History Behind the Warrior. Today we're going to be talking about the Supreme Master of the Fist, Akuma. Now this character has been around for a very very long time, so there have been many interpretations of this character. For the purpose of this remaining very very faithful to the canon, I will not be discussing the Udon comics, as with different writers come different interpretations of a certain character. I also will be excluding the Capcom made films, one because they're not canon and two the fact that they're not canon means they can go off into their own direction. Cough cough the legend of Chun-Li. Now let's get started. Now Akuma's actual name is Goki, he's the younger brother of Goken, the man to become the master of Ken and Ryu. The two trained under a man called Gotetsu, who was a practitioner of Satsue no Hado. This martial art incorporated many different elements, ranging from karate to judo to kenpo. Now many people that practice the art often go mad, but Gotetsu had found the place between serenity and madness, making him one of the few rare exceptions of the art. Now as the two continued training with Gotetsu, Akuma became interested in the darker side of the martial art, wanting to know the true potential the Satsue no Hado has. After many years of training together, the two brothers would begin branching apart, with Goken wanting to create a martial art that didn't have a violent nature, whereas Akuma wanted to fully give in to the darker side of the Satsue no Hado and enjoy the killing intent. This would eventually lead to Goken leaving Gotetsu's dojo, wanting to learn a less violent side to the fighting style. Akuma on the other hand insisted to stay and trained under Gotetsu's dojo for a few more years. Under Gotetsu's teachings, Akuma would give up a very large part of his own humanity, sacrificing his own compassion for power. After realising that learning under Gotetsu had limited his abilities, Goki would leave the dojo, trying to find his own way of enlightenment. And that he did, as when he returned back to the dojo, Goki was no more, he would only be known as Akuma. Akuma would challenge Gotetsu to a fight to the death, with Akuma killing his master of the Shan Goku Satsu. Akuma would then take the prayer beads of his dead master and place it on his neck, deeming himself as the true master of the art. Goken would then go to the dojo to visit Gotetsu, only to find his master dead by the hands of his brother. Goken would curse at Akuma for no longer being human, but Akuma would simply walk away. Akuma would return many years later and fight his old brother whilst the young Ryu and Ken would watch from a distance. Akuma would actually be defeated by his older brother Goken. Realising that he had not fully accepted the Satsue no Hado, he wished for his brother to kill him. Goken refused to do this and Akuma would call him a coward before fleeing. Akuma would travel back to his island and train harder than he ever had before, removing once again a very large part of his humanity in order to become much, much stronger. At this point, he believed that he had transcended humanity and faced his brother once again. When Akuma confronted Goken, this would be after Ryu and Ken had left Goken's dojo. The battle would end with Akuma performing the Son Goku Satsu and Goken, apparently killing his older brother. However, Akuma was not aware that his brother had actually learnt the power of nothingness and emptied his soul when he had the Son Goku Satsu performed on him. This rendered Goken to a rather comatized state, therefore coming across as dead. Now after their bout, Ken would find the seemingly dead Goken on the floor and chase after Akuma in the woods. Ken was simply no match for Akuma and was easily defeated. After this, Akuma would begin travelling the globe, fighting many of the world's best fighters. One of his most notable fights is against the old man Gen. It was a fierce battle, with Gen even surviving the Shan Goku Satsu by emptying his soul in time. The battle would carry on with Akuma realising that this man may be the worthy one he's been searching for. However, when he sees Gen cough up blood, he realises that it's no longer an even playing field. Akuma realises that this is no longer a fair battle, and he walks away, not wanting to carry the fight on any longer. Now for those of you who are rather new to this character, Akuma has a code he lives by, to fight those that he deems worthy and that are on his level, with the intention to kill anyone that stands in his way, but only if it's an even playing field. Akuma simply refuses to fight an unfair battle against an opponent, believing that the real thrill of the battle is knowing that only one person survives. However, he does bend this rule at times as you'll see later on in the video, where he surprise attacks and does kill a few people. Now after his battle with Gen, Akuma becomes obsessed with Ryu, hoping to awaken the dark Hado within him. Eventually, Ryu is able to find Akuma on his own island. The two battle with Ryu gaining the upper hand on Akuma, that is until Akuma reveals to him that Akuma hasn't even touched a shred of his real power yet, 
and that this entire so-called battle has simply been a test for Akuma to try and feel out how much of the dark card Ryu has tapped into so far. Akuma then smashes the island with one single punch, destroying it and leaving Ryu stranded to contemplate his words. Having Ryu oftenly bounce between Ansatsu Ken and the dark hardo throughout the following games. Akuma would then return back to training. At some point, he would defeat and kill a Muay Thai fighter, gaining him the attention of the at the time champion, Adon. Akuma would continue to wander the world until he is confronted by Adon, who wishes to establish his fighting style as supreme. But Akuma simply swats him away like a fly, not even deeming him worthy for a full fight. Akuma would then appear during Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Although he did not officially enter the tournament, he did monitor the events that took place, waiting and choosing the right moment to strike. At the finals of the tournament, Akuma would strike and kill Bison with the Shun Goku Satsu. Now the second finalist and the identity of that warrior is left unknown, as well as the outcome of this battle, as Capcom has never given an official winner to this tournament. I personally would like to have it as Ryu as it would make more sense for this character, but hey ho Capcom and its retcons. Now during Seth's tournament, Akuma could sense the Dark Hardo appearing once more in Ryu. He would then travel the world to seek the boy and make him embrace the Dark Hardo. At some point, he does meet Ryu next to a volcano, where he expresses his disappointment to the fact that he hasn't transcended humanity yet. Ryu retorts that Akuma hasn't transcended his humanity but thrown it away, and with that answer, the two begin fighting. The outcome of the battle is left unknown, as Ryu is seen much later on with his master Goken. Akuma is drawn to Goken, and notices that his brother has perfected the power of nothingness. The two brothers fight with Ryu being the prize, but the outcome is left unknown, as both do survive the battle. Akuma then continues his training and searches for more worthy opponents to battle. Now, during the Second World Warrior Tournament, he is challenged by Sean, the student of Ken. Now, the reason Sean challenged him was because he mistook Akuma for Ryu, and the fight did finish in a matter of seconds. Akuma would later perform the Shun Goku Satsu on the tournament sponsor Gil, the leader of the Illuminati. Akuma would then leave, not knowing that Gil had the ability to resurrect himself. At some point during the tournament, he would face Ryu, asking him to show him his full power, but Ryu replies that malicious intent is not the way of the warrior. Once again, the outcome of this battle is left unknown. After the tournament, Akuma would continue to train as hard as possible, pushing his body to the very limits. Akuma would then at some point come across Oro, and the two would fight. The battle would end in a draw, with both of them being mutually impressed by each other's power. Kind of showing that the only person in Street Fighter history to have ever impressed Akuma and get along with him even in the slightest way has been Oro. Now that's really it for Akuma's history at the moment, but we will know more soon, as he does have ties to the Mishima family in the Tekken universe. It's left unknown how long he's been in debt to Kazumi Mishima, but it's now time to repay that debt to his old friend, and wipe out the Mishima bloodline starting first with Heihachi Mishima. Now I can't talk about Akuma without having some honourable mentions on the way in, such as Cyber Akuma and Shin Akuma who do make appearances in games like SNK vs Capcom. Wink wink nudge nudge SNK fans. Now one rendition of Akuma that's universally accepted is Oni, which is confirmed to be the more or less official version of Akuma if he was to completely eliminate all of his humanity. This character at the moment in the canon is technically a what if, However, it is still possible for him to become this. Another thing I want to bring up is Ryu possibly being the son of Akuma. This as of right now is not canon, but he was portrayed as being Ryu's father in one of the Street Fighter films, which was in no way, shape or form canon. Another thing I want to bring up is his appearance in Azura's Wrath. Despite the battle being really intense and cool, it is not canon. Ooh, pretty lights. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I've cleaned a little bit of this up for you so you guys can understand the canon a little more. If I've missed a little bit or like there's something that I haven't talked about, please put it in the comments below because it helps me and lets you guys know a little bit more about this character that I currently don't know. Now the one thing that seems to hurt Akuma as a character is the fact that many of his bouts with many of his rivals are left unknown, which does hurt his integrity at times. I can understand why they do this as you don't want a really monstrous character being probably as dangerous as a kitten. So I can kind of understand why they took this character in that direction. Anyway guys, here's a preview for next week's episode.
I figured it'd be a great time to talk about King from Tekken, as he was the first Tekken character I ever picked up, so I have a lot of history with this character myself. Anyway guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know, and I will see you guys next time.